My name is James Urbaniak. My Twitter handle is at James Urbaniak. And uh, yeah, I'm an actor and uh, a very active social networker. And uh, it was nice to be asked to uh, present. So which, which award are you presenting? I'm presenting uh, Best Museum Tweeter. Okay. I'm presenting um, uh, a, 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 a Tweet for Reporters. And a couple other things, a kind of surprise. Okay, a we'll, we'll, keep surprise. Surprise. Yeah. we'll keep the surprise. <laughs> uh, tell us uh, what social media has done to the world of acting and actors and how it has helped you in your career. Yeah, well, we live in interesting times where, as you know, like actors can create their own stuff and don't have to go through a sort of middleman. You don't really need a publicist. You can just sort of put yourself out there and if people respond to what you're putting out, uh, they'll, they'll respond to it. So and, what it yeah. What are some of the things you do tweet about? And tell us also about some of the shows you're on because our audience certainly knows some of them. Oh, well, uh, the, sort of the best known thing is I'm on an Adult Swim cartoon called The Venture Brothers, which has a very devoted cult following. Uh, for You'd those... like it to be not so cult, right? You want it to be bigger. Well, the cult grows every year, and the cult is very intense. Uh, and when you're around a lot of the members of the cult, it can get quite intense. So okay. we're good. We're going along. But it's sort of a parody of Johnny Quest. It's a, like an old adventure family who go off on weird adventures. And then I just, I'm an actor. I kick around and do a lot of TV and film and stuff. And used to do a lot of theater in New York. But, like, you can... It's, it's, uh, I like to just tweet about whatever interests me. I, I'm kind of a political junkie. I like to tweet about and follow a lot of political uh, people and stuff like that. But then I'm also a showbiz junkie, so I like to tweet about showbiz. And sometimes I just like to tweet silly jokes. Okay. Let's, uh, let's give a shout out to somebody who you admire on Twitter that maybe people don't know, or even if it's somebody well, you know who's, who's on here. Uh, yeah, account. do you want to just come around and let's see who. Who he's listening to? Ooh. Here we go. Oh, let's go. We'll okay. just see who we got here. Who we have here? Uh, emo kids love me. Uh, she's a uh, she's a political uh, uh, blogger lady uh, down in uh, Atlanta. She's awesome, and she's got one of my favorite Twitter handles. Emo kids love me. Uh, Heidi Moore, Moore H N, another. Uh, she's a journalist. Right. She's very wry. Mojave phone booth, uh, an offshoot of a. Uh, a uh, sort of interesting blog. He Mojave just kind of, phone booth. Mojave phone booth. He just tweets about weird stuff. AP Mike is Mike Lisk from WFMU. People like that. John Hodgman. I'm my friend Drew Grant, Video Drew. Writes for the New York Observer, a very wry person. So like a lot of kind of writers, performers, people and people who, more people who write about politics than people who are in politics. Although I do follow Sarah Palin for comedy purposes. And what do you think of how Roger Ebert used Twitter and social. Well, that was amazing uh, that, and very touching to me that in the last chapter of his life, when he had been robbed, literally robbed of speech, he found this new platform to communicate with. He completely mastered the form. He really got what it was about. It was about communicating. And what a lovely thing that at the end of his life, he was able to be so active and probably communicated more uh, specifically and profoundly with people than he ever did through his whole career in that last chapter. So I think it's amazing right. well, that, on, on that, that happened at the time yeah. that he, for him. Well, on that note, thank you very much, thank James, and good luck tonight. Thank you so much.